So this talk is primarily uh, for the monastic community, but it applies to everybody who belongs to groups. Okay. <clears throat> so we had a mentors meeting last week, and there were a few uh, interesting points that came up during it. And one was uh, the thing of, of people, you know, not necessarily feeling like they're not, let me start over. One of the main points was wanting to increase uh, people's awareness of being part of a community and part of a team when you're doing your offering service work or anything uh, at the Abbey. And another was that uh, it seems like a lot of people were had given the feedback that they have so much to do and they're running from one thing to the next. Uh, so we saw a link between these two, yeah, which was uh, the rota system, okay, that you have many rotas, and in each rota you it would apply, it may apply to one big task, but you have five people each doing a very small part of it. So for example, uh, if there's a rota to set up the altar, you know, um, when I lived at Dharma centers and monasteries, it was one person in charge of setting up the altar for a long, and we had that assignment for a long period of time. But here, it's it, who sets up the altar is constantly changing, and it's a whole team of people. So one person does the water bowls, one person turns on the, on the lights, and a third person does the food offering, a fourth person dusts it, something like along that line, or setting up for teachings you know, one person does this, another person does that. Pujas are even more complicated because one person does a big offering in a bowl, another person does one set of water, water bowls. Tara Puja, you have six sets of water bowls, don't you? Or five. Well, well you usually have. Anyway, you know, so one person does one set of washes, another person does another, another person does another person does this, and, this. and then you have, you know, all the different offerings. One person does the tormo, one person does this, one person does the general offerings, you know, and so what you find yourself doing is one little job in many, many departments. You know, it's like, one person writes a letter, another person addresses the envelope, a third person puts on the stamp, a fourth person closes the envelope. You know, this kind of thing, okay? And, it, and then the poor person who has to do the rotas, it's like, you know. And so the way we link these two is when you have that kind of system where everybody just has one little piece, then nobody feels like um, like this is their thing, you know. Like if you're assigned to do the the altar for let's say three four months, and you do everything about setting up this altar, let's say, then you have a, a feeling of you know I'm the representative of the entire abbey who is making this offering you know, all the different offerings on behalf of everybody at the Abbey, yeah? And so there's this feeling of, you know, you're doing something as, as the, a member of a group on behalf of that group, yeah? And you do the whole thing, which is very different than you do a little bit, then you run to the next thing, and, you know, first you set up, uh, you know, uh, there's seven offering bowls. You set up three of them, then you run to the other department to uh, print out the letter, then you run to the other department to to uh, empty that trash can, but not any other trash cans. Then you go over here and you have to sweep that. You know, and so you're constantly running around, but you never feel like, oh, this is 
my thing that I'm doing on behalf of everybody. Yeah. So one idea we had was to um, change this whole rota thing. And it's, it's going to take some time. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. But, um, you know, to make it fewer jobs and people do a certain job for a longer period of time. And then you switch jobs. So, you know, after a while, everybody's done all the different, you know, the different easy jobs and, uh, and has some experience in them. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then th that would create a feeling of, yeah, I'm, I'm part of a group and doing this for everybody. Does that make some sense to all of you? <clears throat> so, yeah, so that, that's one part of the thing. And then just until we revise all of that and change that, for people, um, you know, to, to really see the different tasks that you do in the monastery as offering service. Yeah, that's why we called it offering service. We did not call it slave labor. <laughs> okay, it's called offering service. In other words, whatever you're doing in your different department, in your different work, you are part of a community. You are part of a group. And everybody in the group is taking care of some aspect of something so that the whole group can function together and, uh, and be useful in society. You know? And that's one of the things that I've really seen about, because I've spent many years living alone, and now, you know, 20, almost 21 years, at the Abbey, yeah, the Abbey will be 21 on October 17th. Um, but I can see the difference, you know, when, when you are a, a solitary monastic, you just take care of your own life. And you know what other people do, they do. You, do, you don't have to get involved in it. And, uh, and there may be many, many things you want to do but you're only one person, you can't do them all. Yeah. When you're part of a community, yeah, then there's different people in the community can do that can do many of the things that you would like to do, but you can't because you only have one body. Okay. So for example, just this last week, we got three different requests from people for somebody to come and talk to some group or another. Yeah. If you get that and you're one person, uh, plus you have a regular schedule, it you know, you can't do it all. Yeah. Uh, plus the, the prison work, plus you know, somebody's dying, plus somebody else is sick, plus you have to plan a, a trip. You know, you can't do all of these things. But if you live in a community, yeah, then you know, we, uh, Venerable Tarp and I work together, and so then there are three different people who are going to speak at these three different, uh, you know, requests. And they're doing it on behalf of the community. So I can sit here and rejoice, like, wow, you know, if, if all of that was directed to me, there's no way I could do it. But how wonderful that all those people's requests for help, for Dharma help, are, are being met uh, by other people in the community. And this is my community. <laughs> my. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, it's, it's you could, you just, it doesn't matter mine or others, okay. But you feel like, yeah, you're part of some community of people who are doing good things, and you can rejoice at what other people are doing. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and then your own heart feels 
Well, you feel more joyful because there's people who have skills that you don't have and who can make things happen. And you feel joyful that, uh, you know, people who didn't have the opportunity to do things now can step up to the plate and do it. And, and so, you know, that's from, uh, you know, the perspective of anybody in the group. And then also as the person who does a particular task or fulfills a request, you know, to, to know that you're doing it on behalf of the community and that everybody here is supporting you, um, you know, and rejoicing in what you're doing. And so that creates a totally different feeling for, uh, what it, for what living in a monastery means, okay, versus people who just live on their own, or versus what a community that is being treated like just a, um, like a, not a hotel, well, kind of like a hotel, a boarding house for monastics. You know, like, okay, we, you know, here's this place where all monastics live, but they don't function together as a community. Everybody's still doing their own thing. You feel like coming to something, you come. You, you don't feel like coming to it, you don't come. Yeah, that's, that's a boarding house. That's not a community. That's not a monastery. And so we you know, we function as a monastery. And so that's why, uh, you know, living together, we have uh, privileges and we have responsibilities. His Holiness talks about that a lot, yeah? Because whenever we do something, of course, we want the privileges, but we don't necessarily want the responsibilities. But how do you grow, yeah? It's not necessarily the privileged part that helps us to grow. I'm sure it does. But it's the responsibility part, too, you know, that, that there are things that are, you know, need to be done so that the entire group can function, not just so that I can function, but so that everybody here can function. And I want to contribute to that, you know, because it's something virtuous and it's something wonderful. And look what we're doing together that we could never ever do as one individual. Yeah. And so, you know, we keep ha needing to remember that again and again and again. Yeah. Because it's so easy living in community. You just say, Oh, you know, there's so many rotors, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. I don't feel like doing any of these things, actually. And then you find your own little ways of mm, revising your own personal schedule. And I see, you know, uh, people know that I walk uh, in the morning. I see a lot of people during the hours of morning meditation who are not in the meditation hall. Yeah. Am I seeing ghosts? Everybody's really in the hall? And I'm just seeing people who look like so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. <laughs> you know, maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. But maybe... Yeah, there's people who aren't being where they should be. Yeah, and, you know, so our schedule is our responsibility to ourselves for our own practice because the schedule is designed to help us learn, to meditate, to work together, you know, so that we can actually see how our practice is going. You know, sitting in meditation, your medi your practice is great, you know. The only th person you get, thing you get mad at is the birds who are making too much noise ch chirping. Yeah, but when you have to work together in a community, then you really see, you know, how's my practice going? Yeah. So the schedule is designed to help our own practice, and 
uh, other people are doing the same thing at the same time. So if we define, design our own personal schedule based on what I feel like doing, which is basically uh, not going to anything except the meals, and maybe sometimes not even those, because I prefer to go in the kitchen and get my own food, which we're not supposed to do. Do you, you see what I mean? You know, we all have our own little ways of like mm, skirting around this and skirting around that. Um, and, you know, the more we let that continue, the more we become a boarding house instead of a monastery and a community. Yeah. So, you know, this is. Uh, People's individual responsibility. The Tibetans have gegus. You know, the gegu is the the dope dope, the uh, disciplinarian. Okay, in Tibetan monasteries, they were big guys. They wore like a some kind of like a football player. You know, except it was probably a wooden board, something that made your shoulders look big and padded, and you had a big stick, and you would walk around the monastery and check on what everybody was doing, you know. Um, I kind of feel like, you know, we're adults. We can all hopefully take responsibility for ourselves, yeah, and, uh, and do what, you know, participate in a way that helps your own practice and uh, supports the rest of the community. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I lived in France, uh, well, Venerable SK and I lived there together, uh, and every time somebody new came to live there, they wanted to change the schedule. Yeah. And you know, we thought, oh, well, we, we want to be nice and accommodating and open-minded. So we kept changing the schedule. And it didn't work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when, when people come here, and I will say this especially for the, the AML group, too, um, you know, it's everybody's choice to come here. Yeah. And if you prefer to drink coffee and uh, have Kentucky Fried Chicken and donuts, there's the rest of the world where you can go and have it. Yeah. But here, we don't eat those things. Well, maybe sometimes the donuts. <laughs> but we should really cut down on the, the sweets, you know because it's it's not very healthy. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, just to really all of us remember why we're here and also uh, rejoice at what everybody else here is doing and what everybody else here knows that we don't know, you know, and isn't that nice because then we can learn from all these other people. And then when we don't understand something, we can call for help. Yeah. And if you're like me, uh, when I need help, I ask somebody to come and help and fix whatever isn't broken. And as soon as that person walks in the room and tries to see what the problem is, it works. They don't even have to do anything to fix it. Yeah. Venerable Kuncho and Venerable Rinchen will attest to that. Yeah, I have computer problems. I can't do something. They come and help me, and I try and show them what's wrong, and just their presence fixes it. How nice. If I lived alone, it would continue to be broken. OK. So uh, yeah, so that's what I had to say. And, uh, you know, during EML, we will be revisiting a lot of the basic uh, things that the Buddha set up for monasteries 
you know, the six harmonies, you know, why the, the ten reasons why the Buddha set up precepts, all those kinds of things that, uh, you know, most of you, all of you should have heard before, but we tend to forget. And then hearing them again, it's like, oh, yeah. 